guys, I hope you're all having a lovely day. Welcome back to my channel. Today I just wanted to sit down and do a video I've been meaning to do for the longest time now, and that is a home Q&A all about us buying the house, um, renovating it, interior design, inspiration, all of that kind of thing. I do just want to say, I know I don't have to apologise for this, but I feel like I look very uh, not put together right now. It's the Easter holidays, I'm really struggling to find time to film. Um, but I really wanted to get this video up for Thursday, so I'm filming this in the evening. And because it's my house q and I thought I would film in the kitchen. Until I realised the dishwasher's on, the tumble dryer's on, the fridge is making weird noises, so I've just had to turn everything off. But anyway, I hope this is okay. I just wanted it to be just a nice informal chat with you guys, answering your questions. Um, yeah, so let's just do that. So I asked actually uh, embarrassingly long time ago on Instagram for your questions for this. So one of the most popular questions I get asked is... What ended up costing more than you planned and less than you planned? Um, and I think this is a really difficult question to answer because it's going to be different for every person's different project from renovating an entire house to decorating a room. What I would say is I think, from my experience so far, everything costs more than you think it's going to cost. It's just unbelievable how many little extra things come up that you just don't even, it, they don't even enter your mind. I mean, I don't want to get into a massive long answer, but for example, we're renovating the garden at the moment. I know that's a bit different to the house, but it's kind of fresh in my mind. So we kind of priced up what all of the fence panels would cost, then all of the posts in between that. But for example, we didn't realize we had to buy two bags of cement per post. We just assumed it would be one. And I didn't even think about cement in the first place. I just thought you hammered it into the ground, like that's the way my brain works. So straight away we had all of that concrete to pay for. So if you're if you're very knowledgeable about your build or your renovation project and you know every little thing that you're gonna need right down to the right screws, then maybe you won't find that aspect of it as difficult as me. Um, but what I found with every room, with every area, there would be um, more of a cost, even down to painting. We bought so much more paint than I ever thought we would need. I've also had a lot of questions about saving for a mortgage. I know this is something that all of us, most of us, the majority of people find so difficult in this day and age because we have such a huge deposit to save up for. And of course there are different schemes, help to buy and things like that, but generally you're looking at a 10% deposit legal fees, stamp duty. One good thing that we had um, in this area was that it was our first um, purchase. Neither of us had bought a house before. So we had less stamp duty to pay, which obviously if we move again in the future, we will have that to pay, but that really did help initially. Um, and yeah, I would say the best tip for saving is whatever your budget, whatever your earnings, put money away in a separate account and don't even touch it. If you have the um, the capacity to do it, then put a certain amount of money, maybe as a direct debit to go into that account so you're not even missing it, your wages come in and then that amount goes out and then that will be building up without you even really thinking about it and you think it's gonna take forever and yes, the reality is it's so expensive to buy a house, um, but, the time goes so fast. I mean, we've nearly been in this house or nearly owned this house for a year and that just seems ridiculous to me. So in a year, you can you can save up quite a bit of money depending on what you have to put into it. So I would definitely say my tip is to have a separate bank account and just put in as much as you can without making like everyday life difficult for yourself. So somebody asked, I'm currently planning to get a mortgage with my fiance next year. Did you find it difficult to get a mortgage being self-employed? So the answer to this is it can definitely be difficult to get a mortgage being self-employed and it can depend again on a lot of factors, how many years you've already been self-employed, what you earn, um, there's so many different things that can go into it um, but we were really lucky that one of our friends is a mortgage broker and we actually went to school with his fiance and we've got to know him really well because so many of our friends have got their mortgages through him. Like over the years, we've always seen them 
buying houses and we always ask who, who who was your mortgage broker it was always mark so our mortgage broker was mark bugs i'll link all of his information below because even though he is our friend um i would highly recommend him and obviously he was a big part in helping us get this house um, and not only do they kind of come to you with what banks are willing to lend you the money and what the rates are and all of that kind of thing the interest rates um he also helped us understand a bit more about surveys and solicitors who was really patient with us when things were taking a while because we actually were going to buy a different property first of all um, and then he is also there to help um, through like when you've you're a bit further down the line and you have to look into the really serious things like life insurance um, and all of that kind of stuff home insurance buildings insurance and then afterwards as well like when we go back to him in a couple of years time to decide if we want to remortgage or anything like that he again is there, so he's so, so helpful. Um, he can work remotely as well. You don't have to live locally to him for him to be your mortgage broker. So like I said, I'll leave his information below. He is genu genuinely a really good guy and knows what he's talking about. So another question I got asked quite a lot in different ways was how long is the process of buying a house from putting an offer in to owning the property or the house? And again, it's so hard to give like a timeline because it's going to be so different for everyone. So I can give you an example of what it was like for us. So we actually found our house in February or March of last year, which doesn't even sound that long ago really, like a year ago we found it. We were first time buyers and the owners of this house uh, were going to move down to the coast to be closer to the, the lady's father and they were going to rent a house so there was no chain there was us and them um, and everything went fairly smoothly apart from a few little bumps in the road um, so if we say that was sort of the end of February we owned the house it was the keys were in our hand on the 29th of june so february march april may june yeah the longest it took because it may have even been the very start of march so the longest it took was four months for us so that could i don't know if that sounds like a long time or a really short time but when you think that gen generally there's more people in a chain than that and the chain i think they say one in three chains just break so we were really really lucky with um, how it all worked out for us but even with no chain just a buyer and a seller and that's it it took four months so many people ask me where i buy lots of stuff for the house and what my favorite interior stores are so i think if you've seen a lot of my um renovation videos and vlogs and homeware hauls and room makeovers you will probably know that um, I love Home Sense. It's probably, probably my favourite, I would say, because you just never know what you're going to find in there. Um, and so many things I own are from Home Sense. I also love Amazon. I did an Amazon Best Buys video, which was all home related, to show you all of the things in this house that were bought from Amazon. I think it's quite surprising what you can find on there. Um, I also love, I love Dunelm. I love where else I'm just trying to think obviously home since antique home max because I, I just like always go in both of those um I'm just like looking around me think oh of course Ikea um Ikea is always been a favorite of ours um there's so many we shopped around so much for stuff for this house and we're still not completely done um but yeah I'd say home sense slash TK max Amazon Dunelm Ikea and a bit of next as well one question I got a fair few times was, did you do most of the renovations yourself? So, I've mentioned this before, but we're incredibly lucky that my dad is a carpenter. So, there were lots of aspects that he did for us. He fitted our kitchen. He pretty much uh, renovated our bathroom for us. The only things we really needed to get other tradespeople in for were plumbing and electrics um, and plastering. Because, obviously, they are different trades um, so obviously we got other professionals in to do those jobs but that was something so another question I got asked was how did you keep costs down when you were renovating after just spending out so much money on a deposit so the fact that we had my dad we couldn't have done the renovations that we've done so far without him um, because obviously I think it would have at least doubled the costs 
So he's been an absolute lifesaver and I don't think I'll ever be able to thank him enough for all of the hard work that he's put into this. And I, even my nan and granddad were around here painting most days. Um, so in answer to that question, we did pretty much everything ourselves apart from the stuff that we like didn't have the skills to do. Like my dad was going to tile the kitchen, but he was so busy with other things, we got a tiler in to do that. Ricky, my nan and granddad and I did all of the painting. My dad laid all the floors, all the tiles put up all the blinds, everything. So yeah, a lot of it was done ourselves as a family. Um, and that really did help to keep costs down. Obviously I know not everyone has a skilled tradesperson in their family or close friends, um, but that helps massively because labor is a big chunk of your budget. Someone actually asked, so this kind of ties in, is the paneling you have in the bathroom expensive? It looks so nice. So for the panelling, that was kind of like my vision, I really wanted panelling in the bathroom. Just quickly to talk you through that, so my dad obviously did that, he used MDF, so that's not really an expensive material really. Um, it's actually um, treated MDF, so it's a special one that is able to go in bathrooms, because the amount the boys splash, it would just, I don't know what it would look like in a couple of years time, but it's like a waterproof. MDF, see again I didn't even know that existed until my dad was like no we need waterproof MDF for in there and then all of the like pretty bits of it are trims and architrave, that's probably the wrong word but you know like different trims, beading you can get, you can literally go into home base, B&Q, they will have like racks of different shapes, the amount of beading we've bought for this house for different shelves and Archie's bed and the bathroom it's a minefield, it's a whole thing of its own. Um, so yeah, it's done with MDF, beading along the top, and then we, my dad and I spent one day like marking out where we wanted all, where we wanted all the panels to be, so the toilet fit into one, the bath fit into one, the radiator fit into one, things like that, um, and painted it. So really, it wasn't that expensive. Again, the cost will be getting somebody to do it really. Um, and obviously there are different materials that can be made out of, but we managed to keep the costs down because my dad is so clever. <laughs> Did you find it costs more than you imagined it would bring in your vision to life? I know I quickly touched on this, but yes, I just think you just need to, if you have a budget, I, I honestly think you have to be prepared. Like this is gonna sound really bad, but I would say even another 50% on. Maybe if you're really strict then it won't be that, but it's just things like the garden for example, so we had a budget and I think we're going to go at least 30% over that. So you know, I, I honestly think if you're going to do something, you just have to have that contingency money there because there's always something in my um, experience of it that comes up. So as long as you're aware of that at the start then you won't be caught out in the end and you won't feel like well we can't finish the job because we only have this much budget. So it's worth saving up that extra bit and if, at the end of the day if you come in completely on budget on your project you have some money left over which is brilliant so it's a win-win. How did you pick the colour schemes for all the rooms? So Initially, I remember this kind of this time of year last year, even before like we knew the property was ours. I just my mind gets carried away, so I was already planning lots of different things. I found it quite hard to pick the colour schemes, and if you've seen my house tours and um, room makeovers and things like that, you'll know that it's quite a neutral colour palette. A lot of the rooms are white with blues and greys and things like that, which I really really like. Now looking at it, a year, nearly a year or maybe six to eight months on, I do feel like there are areas we could definitely have been braver in and we went pretty much white everywhere. So it's not a regret, but I think we could be braver with colour, but it's a good thing because it means that we got it kind of to a more than livable state, a really lovely state, really homely and cosy. Um, but as we live here more, we get used to the space, we know what investment pieces we want to buy and things like that, we can go a bit braver with colour and things will change as they go along. I honestly don't think you should expect to, when you renovate somewhere and move straight in, that it's just perfect straight away. I mean, we still hardly even have any photo frames up in the house, which is awful. Um, and then to go on to another question that I've been asked a lot, where do I get my inspiration? Um, 
I am definitely a Pinterest girl. I love Pinterest. It will be my first port of call for um, looking for inspiration for different rooms. I'll put my Pinterest below because honestly, I just love pinning stuff. Um, and I do get a lot of inspiration from there. My nan last year also bought me a huge like box of interior magazines for my birthday and that was a really great source of information. I love interior design programs. My two favourites at the moment that me and my nan are watching um, are Sarah Beanie's Renovate Don't Relocate. That's on really um, and you can probably catch up on all of them on Sky and Demand if you've not heard of it but basically it's a very simple idea. People are renovating their houses, not relocating. Such a good program and also I love um, George Clark's Ugly House to Lovely House. That's builds and renovations on a much bigger scale and that is just amazing to see the transformations of people's houses. And actually the couple that own Alphabet Bags, they had an episode a few weeks back so it was really lovely to see what they did with their house and stuff because I really love that brand. Oh and Instagram of course, obviously Instagram is one of my I'm on Instagram all the time and I'm always kind of absorbing people's different homes and stuff. Love Instagram for inspiration. This is a good one actually. Do you wish you stayed at your parents longer instead of renting as I assume it was difficult to save? So I think a lot of people are in two camps. There are the people that really just want to move out and rent what, you know, they don't mind if they rent or buy. And there are other people that are like, there is no way I'm moving out from my family home until I have the money for, money for a mortgage. Renting is just throwing money down the drain, which I completely understand. I just think Ricky and I had been together from a really young age, so we were 17 and 18 when we got together, and we basically lived at my parents until I was 22 and he was 23, so we'd already been together for five years, so I feel like if we'd have got together later, then maybe we would have stayed at home for those five years and then we would have saved for the mortgage, if, if that will make sense. But we got to 22 and 23, which is still so young, and we just thought, we really need to move out, we really want to move out. And really, I think looking back, for us personally, it was the best decision we ever made because we, like a year or so after that, started our family, then we got engaged, we got married, had another child, then bought a house, and it, it's just, it just worked out for us. And I know that's not how it works for everybody because not everyone can afford to rent and save for a mortgage, let's just be honest there. Um, so we we were in a really lucky, privileged situation that our jobs allowed us to do that. How long did it take you to find the perfect home from when you started looking? So we must have looked at, I would say, like 20 to 30 houses, which I'm actually told is quite a lot. I don't know. Um, I felt like we were like looking around houses of like, oh no, I hate it again. It's horrible. Um, and then eventually we found one before this, but it just turned out we couldn't really renovate it how we wanted to and then we found this one and it just felt more it was it was just right basically um so yeah i feel like we looked at quite a few um someone else said which i thought was a really interesting question um because i actually wondered this before we got further into this process as well is a renovation cost in with the initial mortgage loan or had you saved separately so um i i i wondered whether you could maybe get a loan of more money to help pay for your renovations, but, but apparently you can't. Maybe you can, but I was told you can't. So we had our deposit and our like, legal fees and all that kind of stuff, and then we had our renovation money saved up. So yeah, it's quite a big, big chunk of money to have to find. Um, I wish they you could get sort of some kind of loan against your house to do renovations. As I said, maybe you can. I didn't find that. and. In a way, I'm quite glad that we didn't have to do that because it would have obviously added more onto the cost of the mortgage. So yeah, maybe look into that, but as far as I know, you can't do that. But I feel like I've rambled on. This is gonna just be a really long video, but you know what, I think that's okay. Sometimes I worry that my videos get too long, but I guess if you're interested in this kind of thing, you'll have watched it. And if it's not your kind of thing, then you won't watch it. And I think that's kind of just have to how I have to see my channel especially when i just do a nice relaxed chatty video that's not been planned out so i hope you enjoyed it um if you have any more questions that i didn't answer 
feel free to leave them below and I'll try and get back to you and answer them. If you enjoyed this video, I'd be really grateful for a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll also leave in the description box lots more videos about our renovation process and all of our room tours and stuff. So if you're new, then you can kind of go and follow the journey from the beginning and see what I'm talking about. Thank you so much for watching everybody and I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye guys!